And Greg, I think what a lot of people want to know is there was an investigation, a criminal investigation being conducted in Georgia about the president's role in trying to fix or switch uh, or bag the election for him. What, what progress has that investigation made? Where do we stand on that investigation today? Well, a special grand jury in Fulton County is meeting as we speak, and the Attorney General, Chris Carr, is going to be testifying. He's set to testify before that grand jury hearing um, today to speak about Donald Trump's efforts uh, to, to overturn the election. And Donald Trump famously called the Attorney General as well, upset that Chris Carr, the Attorney General, had rallied other attorneys general around the nation um, to fight this the Texas uh, complaint. Remember that Texas complaint seeking to invalidate the, the voters will in Georgia and other states. And so that investigation is still moving forward. Uh, we might not hear anything from it for months. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're hearing very little from the actual witnesses who are testifying. Brad Raffensperger testified uh, to that in front of that committee, that special grand jury hearing as well. But that might be the best case for prosecutors in the nation uh, who look to uh, to prosecute to charge Donald Trump with election fraud or his allies with election fraud. Greg, uh, this is Gene Robinson. With Georgia being the center of the political universe now, you know Georgia politics as well as anybody does. What are you What are you seeing as we approach the midterms? Uh, Senator Warnock is is up for re-election. Um, you know the the governor's office is is up in the middle of all this turmoil uh, in Georgia. Um, how, how are things shaping up? We're the most closely divided political state in the nation, in my view. Um, just, you know, 11,000, 12,000 votes divided Joe Biden and, and, and Donald Trump two years ago, and we're still closely divided. But the dynamics are, are leaning towards Republicans right now with inflation, with Joe Biden's struggling approval ratings here, and the fact that uh, Republicans like Brian Kemp, the governor, like Brad Raffensperger, they beat back the Trump back challengers. And to a certain element of voters, to a certain block of voters, they now seem a lot more moderate, but by contrast to the Trump back challengers. And so that's a challenge for Democrats moving forward right now uh, to try to paint those Republicans as the far right because they're not as extreme as David Perdue or Jody Heiss or the other Trump backing uh, challengers who got trounced last month in the primaries here. Well, apparently, former President Trump and his team have reportedly found their fall guy for everything tied to January 6th. Rolling Stone reports that former Trump attorney John Eastman could get all the blame. The January 6th committee has presented evidence that Eastman was the mastermind behind the plot to keep Trump in power by overturning the election. Two sources tell the magazine that in recent weeks, the former president has confided to, the, to those close to him that he sees no reason to publicly defend Eastman. The sources also say that in recent months, Trump has used his usual excuses when someone close to him is accused of misdeeds, telling people privately that he hardly or barely knows Eastman. We should note that this report has not been independently confirmed by NBC News, but boy, it sure smells of Trump. Both Eastman and Trump uh, spokespeople did not respond to requests for comments from Rolling Stone. Yeah, you know, this is Jonathan Lemire. I mean, this is just so predictable. Uh, you <laughs> you get somebody, you push that person out, they do what you tell them to do, and then when it goes badly for Donald Trump, they get cut off at the knees. Looks like it may hell happen to John Eastman as well. I hardly knew him. I barely knew him. Former President Trump used to use phrases like that to describe senior White House aides who he would see every single day uh, in the West Wing. John Eastman, we know, is at the center of this scheme with the fake electors. He was in constant contact with the former president, with the former president's closest aides. This obviously line of excuse carries uh, no credibility to it whatsoever. Joe, frankly, the only surprise is that at the remember in the first days of these hearings, we heard from Ivanka Trump the president's daughter uh, talk about how she believed then Attorney General Barr's assessment that there was an election fraud. The only surprise was that President Trump said, ah, I barely know her. Uh, so they're <laughs> therefore his own flesh and blood. Uh, I don't think many people will put much stock in his excuses here. Yeah, no, I, I, I really don't think so. Of course, we, we remember Donald Trump's first national security advisor, a certain general who was his closest advisor, oh, the guy so that flew creepy. around with him on the plane. The second he got in trouble, Trump suddenly didn't know him. 
Trump suddenly said, oh, you know, he was hardly ever around. And Oh, my God, uh, he was always around. Remember, he was lurking around, always, like, the White House halls. Always. If always, he had, like, a meeting, he would be right there in the door clutching books. Always lurking. Uh, and, and yet, of course, Trump also tweeted that he needed to be sent to jail because he lied. That, that changed. Uh, but things always seem to change. So I, I'm curious, uh, Greg, uh, uh, help us understand Georgia a little bit better. Uh, I always talk about how I was born there. And when I was born there, the suburbs uh, of North Atlanta were solidly Democratic. Uh, that changed uh, in the early 70s and it, it got more and more Republican. And then it became solidly Republican, uh, the home of uh, Newt Gingrich. Uh, and and many other uh, Republicans, um, but then switch back. Uh, what 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 are you finding right now? Uh, two years in Joe Biden's term, where you you seem to have, of course, a lot of swing voters unhappy with, with where Joe Biden is taking the country. Uh, at the same time, you have a lot of Georgia voters, even Republicans, obviously uh, not following Donald Trump anymore. So that where does that leave this key swing state? Yeah, the suburbs are the key for Democrats. I mean, the, this, the Gwinnett County, which is a northeast suburb with more than a million people, that is a the central, basically a cornerstone of the Democratic coalition now. It used to be so solidly Republican that Democrats wouldn't even bother to run state legislative candidates in the county. Uh, the same thing with Cobb County, the home of Newt Gingrich, the home of Johnny Isaacson, the home of so many other famous conservatives in, in Georgia. Um, the, the suburbs now, Democrats face the challenge. It's still going to lean blue. But without Donald Trump on the ballot, how do you go get those centrist voters who were so compelled to vote against um, Donald Trump in 2020, but might have voted for Brian Kemp in 2018? That's the challenge for Stacey Abrams. That's the challenge for Senator Warnock right now. Um, as they try to express their independence, demonstrate their independence from Donald Trump, uh, from Joe Biden, they still support Biden's policies. But, you know, just the other day, just yesterday, um, Raphael Warnock celebrated uh, a, a House subcommittee's decision that essentially overturned, that blocked uh, Joe Biden's plans to close a military installation in Georgia. So you're going to see a lot more efforts from Warnock mm. and Abrams to show that they're, they've got a popular streak. They've got a maverick streak. All right. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution's Greg Bluestein. Thank you, as always. See you again soon.